again, everybody. Welcome back to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the commentary section of the video that we just did. We did a little second look at the Lumu, Luma meter, Luma Labs light and color temperature meter, and unfortunately, it has failed us again. So we are, you know, maybe it's a bad unit, right? That is absolutely possible. It's a bad unit. And so Luma folks, if you're watching, you got my address, send me another one. I bought this one. I bought this. I paid for this. I really, really want this to work because it's my money. Um, this isn't something they sent me to review. So I think you guys need to send me another one. That's what I think. Okay, let's see what's going on in the commentary here. Um, Shiva, so some of these questions are gonna follow up on the previous video. Shiva is saying, uh, Shiva Kumar says, could it be a calibration issue if you have a light meter to check and compare? Yeah, it could be, right? It absolutely could be a calibration and the settings do have the ability to, to calibrate manually, but I also feel that right out of the box it should be a lot closer than this. I mean, if it was like a tiny bit off, I'd say, okay, a little minor calibration. It's off by a third of a stop, but that was what, a stop and a half or so that it was off by? Not good. And the color temperature, I didn't measure, but it's, it had to be several hundred degrees that it was off by. So that's a bit too much. That is a bit too much. Um, Scoregasm saying, you generally watch these on Apple TVs. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I think you're saying you can't do the thumbs up. I think you can. It's a weird interface on the Apple TV, but I'm pretty sure you can. I, I saw it kind of by accident the other day. I think, I could be lying to you, but I think that's what I saw. Anyway, what else is going on here? So there was a question that came up about monitor. Uh, what was that? Let me scroll back and look for that. Ryan said that Scorgasms is wondering if you would do a show or discussion about monitors and wondering what would be best in terms of color accuracy. Ooh, okay, let's let's talk about that for a moment. Um, First of all, could I do a show about monitors? Sure, I mean, I could, right? I could ask b to send me like a bunch of high-end monitors and low-end monitors and compare them. Um, but I have, I have pretty firm beliefs. It's like a religion, right? Pretty firm beliefs on monitors and calibration. If you are color editing, color, doing your, your photo work for print, and you have the printer, you have a really high-end printer you have control over, Calibrating between the two, the printer and the screen, critical, right? Absolutely. So you want a really high quality monitor. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the company. There's a company that makes some really high end monitors that have built in calibration, super awesome stuff. Like really, you know, you're spending a couple grand for a display, but really, really nice. And if you are, if you have that workflow, you obviously, when you're coloring on your screen, you want to be able to hit print and what comes out of your printer is as similar as possible. You know, we have to understand that we have one is reflective surface, right? Print is reflective and the display is transmittive. So there are inherent differences, um, especially in luminance. That's why most advice is to turn your screen monitor brightness way down if you're a color correcting for print. But uh, if you have that set up, you need that. No question about it. If, however, you are just calibrating for, uh, just printing using an outside lab, or not printing at all, just going to screen, the, the value, I think, of doing a color calibration goes down dramatically. Now, if you're, if you're working with a high-end color printer externally and they're sending you color profiles, you can call them, you'd say, hey, I need a color profile, I'm sending out these kind of prints, and they send you one, you drop it in, then, okay, we're back to wanting you to have a color calibrated screen. You still can't do the side-by-side -side comparison unless you're gonna you know, print out color charts and test strips and send them to the, or, or, sorry, generate color bars, test prints, send them to them, they print it, they send it back to you, you calibrate off of that. That's a process that you could do as if you own the printer yourself, but you don't have complete control over the printer. If they make a little tweak to it on their end, you don't know about, you know, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's better than nothing for sure, right? So if you have a good printer company that you're working with and they'll send you the color profile or maybe it's available on their website to download, that's great. You should do that, do a soft proof in that color profile, but then you do need to have a color calibrated screen to be able to do that, to, to see those colors accurately. You still have to expect that it is not going to be 100% accurate. You, you got to expect that. Okay. Now let's talk about screen though. If you're sharing, if you're color correcting images on your screen to share online, so other people's screens. If you color calibrate your monitor, let's say that you buy this $5,000 super awesome calibrate itself every day display, and you've got the most color accurate display in the world, and you color your pictures to this super accurate, and they're right, and you put them on Facebook, or your web page, or anywhere, and someone looks at it on their screen, which is not color calibrated, guess what? It's gonna look different, a lot different because their screen isn't calibrated like yours is. So my approach is if you're creating content for the screen, then create it on this type of screen that everybody's gonna be looking at it on. Now, if you're a Mac user, fortunately, 
across the board on Macs, they are relatively the same. Not identical, especially as you get into these new higher bit depth displays that are coming out. They're just like wicked cool, super bright, super colorful displays. It's not going to be identical, but it'll be close. It'll be very close. Close enough where if you calibrate, if you do an image on your screen, uncalibrate it out of the box, and then you transfer the picture to your iPhone and to your iPad and to your desktop iMac, whatever, and you look at them, they're going to be close enough, right? And you can look at it and go, that's close enough. I'm good with this. When you start looking at other displays, other manufacturers, you got PCs out there and so on, things that maybe not as color controlled or monitors from other manufacturers and you, that other people are going to own and you have no idea, no control. There's, there's nothing you can do about that. Nothing. The best that you can do is have multiple displays in your studio, your home environment, whatever, and look at them on there and make sure that you're at least happy with it. Obviously, if you've got five different displays from five different manufacturers, out of the box, not color calibrated, you're gonna have five different looks, five different colors, five different gamma points, they're all gonna look different. If you can look at a photo on all of those and say, I'm okay with the way these look, that's the best you can do, right? There's no way that you can say, this is perfectly accurate and I want it to look exactly the same across everything. Some browsers like Firefox, and maybe I'm, maybe this, I'm dating myself here, but Firefox at least used to not, and I think it still doesn't, even use color, uh, color profiles in there. So it doesn't even read the color profile that's embedded in the file. So it's just, there's only so much you can do. There really is only so much you can do. So with all that big long ramble said, if you are, if you are doing prints and you need that color accuracy, then there are color monitors that you should buy. I am not a color scientist. That is like a whole other career path that I <laughs> did not go down. Um, from a photographer's perspective, if I was going to go out and buy one, I, let me see if I can find, because I am I know the monitor, I know as soon as I see it, I will remember, I will know that that's right. But um, let me just type in, I'm gonna have Google Color Calibrated Monitor. Oops, monitor, and let's see what it says. See if I come up with the one. Um, ISO, see, knew that would work. Look at this, $5,700 display. Expensive stuff. ISO Color Edge, 31 inch, okay, it's a big screen. Uh, this is 4K, okay, that's, sorry. so it's a 4K display, 31 inch, that's a nice display. Uh, backlit IPS monitor, wait, is this even a color, it was, we didn't have the color calibration thing. Um, this may not. <laughs> anyway, ISO makes all kinds of ones with built-in calibration tools in it, super cool. Let's see, let's just look at the ISO, oops, brands. Brands, open, hello, hello, fly. There we go, search brands, ISO. You go away, you enabled 19 displays. All right, ISO, color edge, I mean, if it says color edge, maybe that means it's got the calibration. In-plane switching IPS technology, let's make that a little bigger. Um, super high contrast, I mean, color, these things are just incredible. Look at 16 by 10 aspect ratio ones. Um, 27 inch, I, most of these have, I'm not gonna, I don't know which ones, but anyway, if not most, many of them have built in, it's like a little thing that pops up, goes boop, and it does a color meter reading, and boop, pops back down, they're really cool, but they're expensive. If you need that, buy that, buy an ISO, they're, and I'm obviously not sponsored by them, I don't own one of these, I've never owned one of these, but whenever I look at them in trade shows, I go, oh, that's really nice, uh, but it's just, it's, it's, I don't bother, I really don't, because, of this reason because no one else has color calibrated displays. Oof, that was a really long answer to what wasn't even the question, but hopefully that was interesting. Okay, uh, what else? Scrolling back down through the comments here. What have we got? Um, Joshua says, we do DIY auto repair videos. Awesome. We got the 14 to 140 F35 to 56 lens. Okay, I've discovered it doesn't really go over 50 to 60 millimeter. I understand what you mean. And would like better light performance. Oh, that you don't go, sorry. I've discovered I don't really go over 50 to 60 millimeter and would like better light performance. Got a lens suggestion. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so you need basically, do you need the full 14? Do you go that wide? Uh, well, actually the new Leica, the 12 to 60, that's right in the range you're looking for. It's faster, it's 2.8 to, what did I say, 2.8 to 4, I always forget, 2.8 to F4. So you're gonna have faster all the way across. Actually, it sounds like the perfect lens for you. Yeah, I'd go for that. And if you want even faster and you can sacrifice a little bit of the line, 12 to 35, but if you're going all the way up to 50, 60, 12 to 35 is not gonna cut it. So yeah, that's the lens for you, man. Get that one, 12 to 60, F2.8 to F4. You're gonna be you're gonna be set, you're gonna be happy. That's the one I would get, Joshua. All right, I absolutely recommend that lens. Sally says, have you seen the Illuminati meter? Wasn't that a setting in here? No, it wasn't Illum Illuminati. <laughs> the Illuminati, the 
Yeah, those guys. Uh, no, it's not. It's not an Illuminati meter. There was something else in here, though. Oops. Come on. Turn on. Pop up. No, it's not gonna pop up. Oh, my phone's locked up. There we go. Light meter. Let's try that again. Siri app suggestions. Light meter. Why is it taking me to a website? I must have. Oh, I must have jumped into the website somehow accidentally. This has the Illuminance, Illuminance, photo ambient, I don't know what the difference is, photo spot, cine video, photo flash, color temperature, and chromatic, chromaticity. That was when I was there was a chromaticity, which I have no idea what that is. Um, but no, I have not seen a, an Illuminati reader, neither, nor am I a member of the Illuminati. Uh, isn't Illuminati a Jay-Z song or something? <laughs> you guys are killing me. Trevor says, the BenQ SW2700PT LED is a great budget option for people who need color accuracy. Should be around $600. I want to see what that is. Let's find out. BenQ, BenQ, Q, SW2700PT LED. Oh, it's, it, trans it swapped that to Bend, not Ben W. Autocorrect is not always your friend. Okay. Um, here we go. Wow, look at that. You're right. 600 bucks. What is this thing? Widescreen LED. This is 2560 by 1440. 27 inch. So that is basically the same panel as the same size as the um, 27 inch iMac. Yep, 25. Yeah, yeah. But that's a non high DPI version of it. So 600 bucks. IPS. And you're saying that it's color. Calibratable? I mean, like built in, or are you just saying it's a really good quality monitor, Trevor? What? Uh, tell us what you're saying about it. It's got four and a half stars. That's pretty good. Four out of uh, 48 reviews. Definitely not too shabby. So, uh, tell. Oh, he says it covers 99% of sRGB. The oh boy, I'm. I don't remember the specs, but doesn't the 5K iMac Retina display also do 97%? And if not, I would imagine the new 10-bit ones have got to be. Like up there, I don't know. Okay, but that's that's a great suggestion. Uh, please do check that out. That's that's awesome. If you're looking for, like he says, a budget um, display, 27 inch, just not high high DPI, but uh, but that's a pretty nice looking display. Cool, dig it. Thank you very much for sharing. Scoregasm says any post WWDC reactions slash thoughts was able to watch your live reaction the next day on YouTube. Um, cool, I'm glad you liked that. That was fun. That was doing that it was a lot of fun. Um, no, I haven't really heard anything else. I haven't heard anything else about photos specifically, which is where I'd really be focusing on. Uh, clearly, there's been a lot of discussion around the iMac. Is it worth it or not? Um, MKBHD, to bring him up again, he did a, a video. I haven't watched it. He just released one about the new iMac. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have one yet because they're not out. So it's all it's all speculation at this point. But um, I'm excited by it, and I think it's a, I think it's going to be a great system for people like me. It's obviously not every pro's system, but for people like me who are basically, uh, I just need one big robust machine for doing my photo and video editing, all-purpose, high-powered machine. I don't want to have to screw around with it. I don't want to have to add things to it. I don't plan on upgrading it. I just want a machine that's fast with a bunch of RAM. It's going to last me for a few years. It seems pretty pretty ideal. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm very impressed by it, so we'll see. We'll see what the price is once you actually bring it up to 12 cores, add, okay, 128 gigs of RAM is a ton, it'd be awesome. I'm sure it's gonna break 10 grand. That, that I, there's no doubt in my mind, uh, because the old iMac broke 10, uh, old Mac Pro could break 10 grand, and that didn't even include a display. So I'm sure it will if you push it all the way up there, but, uh, but I think it looks pretty good. We'll see, we will see. Ryan Green, you have shared with me the Illuminati meter on Kickstarter. All right, let's see what this is. Let's open this and you guys can see what we're seeing as well. The first Bluetooth light and color meter. Oh, interesting. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Illuminati. It's a good name. Okay, 229 bucks. So it's a price is right in line with the Luma Power. Cool. Well, obviously I don't have one, um, but we'll see when they come out with that. I'm not about to buy it, given that I've, you know, already bought this one. And I kind of want the one that I bought to work. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, thank you for looking that up, Ryan. That could uh, That's something worth considering as well. So look up the Illuminati on Kickstarter. All right, anything else? Nothing else. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this thing up. It is Friday. That means it's the weekend. I hope you guys have a nice weekend planned out for you, for yourselves. Get some nice relaxing in if you do that sort of thing on a weekend. Uh, enjoy the weather if you got good weather. If you don't, stay inside and watch a movie. Hey. Thanks a bunch, guys. As always, thumbs up the video if you're digging it. If you learned something here, you know how to do it. Hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate your support all the way around. And subscribe and yada, 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 yada. And uh, one more thing. Let's do, just throw this guy up here just because we can. Let's do, let's do, let's not do that. Let's do this one. Let's do 
So it's nothing, to, well, you know, this one has a little bit more kind of almost to do with what we were talking about. Let's look at this guy. If you're into low light photography, check out my course on lynda.com. If you do photojoseph.com slash lynda low light, that will take you there. Or just go on to lynda.com and search for low light and photo Joseph and you'll find it. Or just search low light and you'll find it. And uh, but, but, but if you don't, if you're not a Linda subscriber, you can get a 10-day free trial by going to photojoseph.com slash Linda. That'll take you to the 10-day free trial. Something tells me that it went up. I mentioned that before and then I completely forgot. I think it went up from 10 days. Well, you'll get it. If you go there, you'll see. You get more than 10 days, but whatever it is. So check it out. It's awesome. I love it when people watch the videos on there. Um, there's no comment feedback system through there. You can feedback through the site. They used to send me all of your guys' messages and then they stopped. I don't know why. But... Um, I know you guys love it. Tweet me. That's what you can do. You can tweet me if you watch one of the videos and you enjoy it. Those I do see. That's really fun. I like getting those. I get tweets every once in a while. Hey, just finished Photo 101. Learned a bunch. Thanks. That's awesome. Makes me feel good. And that's that. Okay, guys. Hey, take care of yourselves. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.